Welcome, Grace Life family and friends. We are so honored that you chose to worship with us today on this online worship experience. We know that things are kind of uncertain right now, but I know one thing with absolute certainty, that God will speak to you today. So we wanna give you four things that we believe will help enhance this experience. Number one, gather with your family and friends. We know it's different and can be difficult to focus at times, but as you gather together, come expecting God to speak to you. Number two, engage. Through whatever online platform you're watching from, be sure to like, share, and comment as you agree with the worship and the word. Number three, give. Although we're not physically inside the church, we still understand that God blesses those that sow into his kingdom. So there will be links in the comments directing you on how you can give. Number four, respond. We know it can be intimidating to worship from home when we usually worship together in one location, but I know that God can move just as powerfully in your home as he does here on Sundays. We encourage you to lift your hands, to clap, and respond in your own way. Now here's your opportunity to put these four things into action. Nothing else, oh no, nothing else. 
else on Jesus, nothing else will do. I just want you, nothing else, no, nothing else, nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence. Grace Life is a very blessed congregation, and the reason why we continue to be blessed is because you have created a culture of giving, biblically, generously, and faithfully. Giving is a very personal thing, so with respect to the current challenges, we want you to be able to give in the way that works best for you. The simplest ways to give during this time would be through the giving portal of our Realm app, our website, or by texting the word Grace Life to 73256 on your smartphone. You can also mail your gifts directly to the church. Additionally, most banks offer a check pay service, which allows you to set up payments that your bank will mail to us, typically free of charge. Although much of our giving is now received electronically, Grace Life finances are still partially dependent on the loose offerings received from our live services each week. As you prepare your hearts for this online worship experience, I encourage you to participate in the worship of giving, just as you would if you were here in this building. Thank you, Grace Life, and God bless you. Welcome to this Easter online worship experience. We are so glad that you're here today. Church today has looked a little different in a lot of ways. We've had to adjust to the changing times and also take precautions to keep our production team safe. Our family specifically has been hit very hard by this virus. Multiple members of our family have tested positive for COVID-19 but thankfully, most are improving. Pastor Abbott, or better known as Papa to many of you, passed away this week after battling COVID-19. I just wanna say on behalf of Pastor and Sister Parkey and our family, thank you for continuing to pray and offer encouragement through this time. I also wanna say, Grammy, if you're watching, we love you. Easter Sunday, what an exciting day. Our Savior has risen to give us the ultimate victory. In Luke 24, verse 2 through 3, the Bible says, And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. In verse 6, it says, He is not here, but He is risen. We have hope and life today because we serve a living God. This week, I felt God in such a powerful way in my home. Some of our deepest hurts and seemingly defeats set up great triumphs. As Jesus was led to be hung on a cross, I'm sure most didn't feel like anything positive could come from these circumstances. However, we know three days later, he rose in victory to save a lost world. We are honored to have Brian Parkey minister to us today. He is a trusted voice to the family and friends of Grace Life, and I know you'll be encouraged by what he has to share with us today. Let's get ready for a powerful word from God. Hello, Grace Life. What a privilege it is to be here with you today as we celebrate Easter Sunday, celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm glad because he lives, I can face tomorrow. We've come today with expectation. We've come today believing that his resurrection power is able to meet all of us where we are 
point of our need and be our help and to be our strength. I give honor to your pastor, Brother Bill Parkey, Sister Stephanie Parkey, and pray God's blessings upon them, God's comfort during the loss of Sister Parkey's father, the Ron Abbott, that God will be with them. So thank you and honor this church for the way that you have rallied around Sister Parkey during her illness. The parade that you put on last week was such a blessing and uh, thank God for it. And know that God is gonna continue to be their help and be their strength. We'd like to read today from Matthew chapter 28, verse one through nine. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by his feet and worshiped him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I love you today and I thank you for your goodness. And I thank you for your blessings. Lord Jesus, you know the way that we take, you know every need that is represented today. And God, I pray for your spirit, Lord, to reach into every home and every heart. And Lord, minister today as we are drawn closer to you. Thank you, Lord for all that you have done for us. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the miracles that you are going to bring into our lives even today. In Jesus' name, amen. One week prior to the story that I read to you today, the atmosphere in Jerusalem was electrified with the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. What excitement and what enthusiasm permeated the crowd as Jesus made his way into the city. They grabbed palm branches and they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. What a picture of power and compassion Jesus portrayed as he ran the money changers out of the temple and turned the tables over, but then in an instant began to heal the blind, heal the lame. The people were ecstatic as they began to visualize Jesus as the one who would save them from Roman occupation. But Jesus didn't come to save them from Roman occupation. He came to save them from something more vicious and tyrannical than Roman rule. He came to save the world. He came to save you and I from our sins. And so the praise turned to protest. The cheers turned to jeers. And the melody that once was became the sound of cruel mocking. Hosanna's transformed into crucify him, crucify him. Jesus was falsely accused, betrayed by his friends and sentenced to die for sins he did not commit. His clothes were taken from him. The spit of Roman soldiers ran down his cheek. The cat of nine tails ripped into his back and made ribbons of his flesh. His brow was broken by the pointed tips of the crown of thorns and blood began to flow. His face was marred as his beard was plucked down. With the help of Simon, Jesus carried his cross up to the top of Calvary's hill. And there they stretched him wide and they nailed him to a wooden frame. Jesus looked at them and with compassion in his heart and in his eyes, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And Jesus, with a loud voice, gave up the ghost and said, it is finished. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world. When Jesus died, there were no, more, there were no parades, no crowds crying Hosanna, no one laying their coats in the street. 
In fact, the Bible tells us that Mary wept. Peter cursed. The disciples hid. The rocks rent. The veil tore. The sun hid. And the earth shook as Jesus gave his life on Calvary. Somebody said the Romans took his life. No, they didn't take his life. Jesus gave his life because he loves you and he loves me. Imagine the chaos that ensued. It seemed that all hope was gone. It seemed that the best days were only ones in the past. It seemed as if their dreams would never be realized. It was a dark hour for the world and it looked like the story of redemption was coming to a bitter end. But in the midst of their pain, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of uncertainty, God was doing history's greatest work. It may seem like our darkest hour at times, but sometimes it's in the darkest hour that God is working his greatest miracle. The story was not yet finished. Jesus was just getting started with what he had come to accomplish. Many years ago, I saw a cartoon strip out of the newspaper. It was entitled BC. And there was a lady there and she was reading her Bible and she was talking to her friend that was sitting next to her. And she says, oh, it says here that, that Jesus descended into hell. And the other lady, she was shocked and she says, you're kidding. And the woman with the Bible says, oh no, not to say, not to stay. He just went there to cancel our reservations. Your life might be in chaos today. Everything may be topsy-turvy. It may seem like all hope is gone. But let me tell you today, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. When you're wondering where God is, here he comes showing up in the direction of your enemy's house, dragging your enemy behind him. You see, many of the disciples had forgotten about the promise that Jesus had made because he told them, he said, he told the, the rulers of his day, he said, destroy this temple in three days and I will raise it up again. While it was yet dark, Mary Magdalene and Mary decided to pay a visit to the tomb. It's interesting to me that Everywhere you look throughout the story of the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you see, you see Mary, Mary Magdalene, the one delivered from, from, from evil spirits, the one who gave her life to minister to Jesus. She was there. Mary was there. She was there at the crucifixion. She was there watching as they put the body into the tomb. And, and we read in our text as she begins to make her way toward the tomb. She was going to make the best of a bad situation. I admire her devotion. I, I admire their intent to bring the, the sweet spices uh, to, to the tomb. But sometimes we fool ourselves into thinking that if we put enough spices on our dead dreams that no one will ever know how desperate our situation really is. You may be watching today and, and maybe you just try to put a smile on your face and you try to act like everything's okay, but you know what? It's, it's okay to come to God and just be real with him and tell him exactly what you're going through and exactly uh, how, how desperate you are in need of him. They start walking, start walking toward that tomb. As they walk toward that tomb, the, the sun began to rise. They were walking toward a brighter day. They were walking towards hope. I challenge you today, keep walking out of your night into, into the day. Because as they were walking, there was a new day that was fixing to start. There was a new week, a new dimension, a new era. There's something magical about the rising of the sun. It just brings hope into our heart. I remember several years ago when my children were small, and in the middle of the night, one of them was, was sick. One of them was struggling, and they came into our room and said, Daddy, is it, a, is it about sunrise? Is it, is it time for the sun to come up? I want to tell somebody today, you may be fearful, you, you may be concerned, you may feel like you're in your darkest night, but just keep walking toward the sunrise because the day star will arise. It will shine in our hearts. Second Peter 1 19 says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed 
as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. God wants to help us. God wants to save us. God wants to rewrite the story of our life. Apostle Peter preached a message to a group of people in Jerusalem one day, and he basically told them that they had killed Jesus. They had royally missed it. Their story had no hope. Found themselves filled with conviction. And the Bible says in Acts 2.37, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Oh my, did we really do that? They were pricked in their heart, and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Those women went toward the tomb. They were facing an immovable obstacle, but they walked toward the tomb with the expectation of a miracle. Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher was one question that was asked as Mark recorded it in Mark chapter 16. The stone was one and a half tons. It was sealed by the authorities. It was guarded by the soldiers. But I'll tell you what, with God, all things are possible. Many of us recognize that there's a barrier between us and resurrection power. Our adversary would have us to believe that it can't be moved. It's too heavy. The authorities say it can't happen. You'll have a fight on your hands if you try to move it. But while they were walking toward the tomb in pursuit of a miracle, the Bible says there was an earthquake. There was a shifting. There was something that transpired. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven. There was divine intervention on their behalf. And the angel rolled back the stone from the door and he sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment white as snow, and the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Those Roman soldiers who declared, we're, we're not going to let anything happen to this tomb. We're not going to let this stone be rolled away. But the angels of the Lord showed up, and everything turned around, and the angels sat on the very thing that was their obstacle to the desire of their heart. So glad that when we find ourselves facing obstacles that we don't have the strength, we don't have the understanding, we, 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 we don't know how we're going to go forward. How that all of a sudden God, through his power and through, through, through the dispatch of his angels into our life, things can be moved away. And the obstacle that was there for one moment now is gone because we came looking for the miracle. When the women showed up, the stone was rolled away. The greatest discovery was on the other side of the stone because they didn't come just looking for the day to dawn. They didn't come just looking for a miracle. They came looking for Jesus. The angel said it this way, fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified, but he is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, See the place where the Lord lay. Yes, he was crucified. Yes, he was beaten. Yes, he took the crown of thorns upon his head. Yes, he suffered. Yes, he was betrayed. Yes, he took our sins and our transgressions and he nailed them to the cross. He was buried, but I'm so glad he rose again as he said, for he is faithful to his word. He's faithful to his promise. He just needs a Mary that says, you know what? They're crucifying my Lord, but I'm gonna stay here. Judas has betrayed him. Peter has denied him, but I'm gonna stay here. We need a Mary Magdalene that, that, that sits there as they put the body in the tomb and says, I'm not leaving, I'm staying here. We need a Mary Magdalene that says, I'm going to the tomb. I'm, I'm going with expectation. I'm going believing there, there, the angel testified, he's not here, for he has risen. I'm glad we serve a risen Savior today. 
We serve our risen Savior today. Maybe today you're, you're in the darkest night and maybe the earth is shaking and, 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 and there's, a, there's, there's chaos all around us. Who would have thought three, four weeks ago that we would be where we are as a nation, as a world facing the pandemic that we're facing? But there's a divine shift and God is going to see us through. God is going to help us. God is going to make this the greatest hour of the church. Our night may be dark. Our dreams may be dead. But because he has risen, God can turn things around today. This is a new day. It's a new hour. It's a new opportunity for the church to go forward in Jesus' name. He left that sepulcher with fear and great joy. They left the sepulcher with fear and great joy. But as they were leaving, Scripture says along the way, Jesus met them and said, all hail. Some kind of greeting. He, he, he called out to them to, to get their attention. And they came and they held him by the feet and they worshiped him. Today, Jesus is calling out to us. May this be a, a quickening of our spirit. It may just be a, a, something in the back of our mind that says, you know what, I, I, really, I really need to seek him. I, I, need, I, I, need, I need to press through until the day dawns. I need to believe God for a miracle. I need to seek after him. You know what our answer is? Our answer is Jesus. They came seeking Jesus. But Jesus said, hey, I could use our own vernacular. Hello, how are you? There he was. The moment of recognition. They, they worshiped him. He fell at his feet and worshiped him. I just happy to believe today that God knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. He's reaching for you. He's reaching for your family today. I've heard so many reports People being stirred, reaching out through the internet, reaching out through emails and text, and phone calls, saying, you know what, I, I need to get right with God. People looking around and seeing the skies dark and feeling the earthquake and, and seeing all that's going on, saying, I, I, I need to find him. Today, he's calling you. He's reaching for you. Mary, thank you for showing us how to stay there during the times of the crucifixion and be there at the burial, be there at the tomb and be, the, be a witness, a first-hand witness to death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mary, you knew what he could do because Mary, you were delivered from all that held you captive. You gave yourself to serving him. Today, God's looking for, for, for another Mary who's looking for men and women, young and old alike, to say, Lord, on this Easter Sunday, Lord, we're gonna, we're gonna walk towards you. We're gonna come with the expectation of a miracle. And Lord, we're gonna come seeking nothing but you. I challenge you right where you are. You take a time just to close your eyes you want to kneel, kneel. We're going to pray together. Lord Jesus, I love you today. And on this Easter Sunday, Lord, we're celebrating something that is so much bigger than just, a, it's not just, not just a holiday. It's not just a custom. Lord, we're celebrating life. We're celebrating eternity. We're celebrating that God, the power that could transform a life and make us a new creature in you. Lord, I pray for everybody that's connected today, everybody that's watching today. Lord, we come today and we may be in a dark period of time. We may be in a dark period in our home or our lives. But God, help us to walk toward the light. Lord, there may be barriers. There may be stones that we're thinking in our mind. There's just no way. And, and, and it, it, I'm just going to have to to leave it like it is. But God, I pray that we would open our mind and our heart and spirit, Lord, for a miracle. Lord, I pray that first and foremost, we would come seeking you and calling upon that name that's above every name. 
and allow you, Lord, to be the Lord of our life in Jesus' name. We're so honored that you chose to be a part of our Easter online worship experience today. Our hope is that you feel the power of God in your home, just as if you were able to be with us live. If you are new to Grace Life, we would love the opportunity to connect with you. If you are interested in a Bible study, being baptized, want to speak with someone on our pastoral team, or have a prayer request, please go to our website, mygrace.life, and go to the contact tab. Since we are not gathering in person, we encourage you to engage in other ways. Please like, comment, and share what God is doing in each of your homes. We hope you have a great week, and we look forward to connecting with you soon.